maybe from your perspective, let me ask the this the most basic question. Yeah. H- how do you think of a neural network? What is it a neural network? What, yeah, okay. So can I start with the idea about deep learning? What does that mean? Sure. What is uh, deep learning? <laughs> what is deep learning? Yeah. So so we're trying to learn from all this data, we're trying to learn what's important. What, what's, the, what's it telling us? So you've, you've got data. You've got some inputs for which you know the right outputs. The question is, can you see the pattern there? Can you figure out a way for a new input, which we haven't seen, to, to get the, to, to understand what the output will be from that new input? So we've got a million inputs with their outputs. So we're trying to create some pattern, some rule that'll take those inputs, those million training inputs, which we know about, to the correct million outputs. And uh, this idea of a neural net is part of the structure of of our new way to create create a rule. We're looking for a rule that will take these training inputs to the known outputs. And then we're gonna use that rule on new inputs that we don't know the output and and see what comes. Linear algebra is a big part of defining or finding that rule. That's right, linear algebra is a big part. Not all the part. People were leaning on matrices, that's good, still do. Linear is something special. It's, it's all about straight lines and flat planes. And, uh, and, and data isn't quite like that. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's more complicated. So you gotta introduce some complication. So you have to have some function that's not a straight line. And it non-linear. turned out, it, non-linear, non-linear, Scary. non-linear. And it turned out that the, it was enough to use the function that's one straight line and then a different one, halfway. <laughs> so piecewise linear. Piecewise one linear. Piece of, one piece has one slope. One piece, the other piece has the second slope. Yeah. And uh, so that introdu- getting That's, that nonlinear, simple nonlinearity in, uh, blew the problem open. That little piece makes it sufficiently complicated to make things exactly, interesting. Exactly, because you're going to use that piece over and over a million times. So you, so you. It has a it has a fold in the in the graph. The graph, two pieces, and but when you fold something a million times, you've got you've got a pretty complicated function that's pretty realistic. So that's the thing about neural networks is they have a lot of these. A lot of these. Those, that's right. So why do you think neural networks by using a sort of formulating an objective function? Very not a plain yeah. uh, a function. Lots of, of the, folds. Lots yeah. of folds of the inputs, the outputs. Why do you think they work to be able to find a rule that we don't know is optimal, but is just seems to be pretty good in a lot of cases? It, What's your intuition? Is it surprising to you as it is to many people? Do you have an intuition of why this works at all? Well, I'm beginning to have a better intuition. This idea of things that are piecewise linear, flat pieces, but but with folds between them. Like think of a roof of a complicated, infinitely complicated house or something that 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 curved. It almost curved, but it, but every piece is flat. Uh, that that's been used by engineers. That idea has been used by engineers. Uh, is used by engineers big time. Something called the finite element method. If you want to, if you want to design a bridge, design a building, d- design a pl- airplane, you, you're using this idea of piecewise flat as as, as a good, a simple, computable approximation. So, but you you have a sense that. Um that there's a lot of expressive power in this kind of piecewise linear yeah, functions that's, combined that's, together. You use the right word. If you measure the expressivity, yeah. how how many, how complicated a thing can can this piecewise flat guys express? The answer is very complicated. Yeah. So, what do you think are the limits of such piecewise linear or just 
of yeah. neural networks, the expressivity of neural networks. Well, you would have said a while ago that they're just computational limits. It, you, you know, you, you, it's a problem beyond a certain size, a supercomputer isn't going to do it. But that those keep getting more powerful. So that's uh, that limit has been moved uh, to allow more and more complicated surfaces. So in terms of just mapping uh, from inputs to outputs, looking yeah. at data, yeah, what do you think of uh, you know in in the context of neural networks in general? Data is just tensor vectors, matrices, right. tensors, yeah. right? How do you think about learning from data? What, how much of our world can be expressed in this way? How useful is this process? Is the, I guess that's another way to asking. What are the limits of this? Well, that's approach? a good question. Yeah. So I guess the whole idea of deep learning is that there's something there to learn. If the data is totally random, just produced by random number generators, then the we're not going to find a useful rule because there isn't one. So uh, the extreme of having a rule is like knowing Newton's law. You know, if you hit a, hit a ball, it moves. So that's where you had laws of physics, Newton and, and Einstein and other great, great people have, have found those laws and laws of uh, the, the, the the distribution of oil in a in an underground thing. I mean that so so uh, engineers, petroleum engineers, uh, understand how how oil will sit in a in an underground basin. Uh, so there were rules. Now now the the new idea of artificial intelligence is learn the rules instead of instead of figuring out the rules by with help from newton or, or einstein the computer is looking for the rules so that's another step but if there are no rules at all for uh, that the computer could find if it's totally random data well you, you've got nothing you've got no science to to discover it's a automated search for the underlying rules yeah search um, search for the rules yeah exactly <laughs> And there will be a lot of random parts. A lot. Of, I mean, I'm not knocking random because you know, <laughs> that's there. The the uh, the there's a lot of randomness built in, but there's got to be some basic. Uh, it's almost always structure. signal, right? In most, there's got to be some signal. Yeah. If it's all noise, then there's there's you're not going to get anywhere. Well, this world around us does seem to be does seem to always have a signal of some kind. Yeah, yeah, that's to right. be discovered. Right, that's it. 